the biblical truth of our hymns today all hail the power of Jesus name the music is by Edward Earlnet verses 1 through 5 and then John Ripon stands at number 6 the music is Oliver Holden a little history about the gentleman at the time persecution of the Methodists was come John Wesley once noted in his diary that Edward himself was thrown down and rolled in mud and mire at Bolton. Through considered a capable preacher, Pearlnet was uneasy about doing so in front of John Wesley, despite Wesley's persistent urging. After tiresome of requests, Wesley simply announced one day that Brother Pearlnet would speak. Edward cleverly managed to escape Wesley's invitation by mounting the pulpit and declaring that he would preach and deliver the greatest sermon ever preached and proceeded to read Christ's Sermon on the Mount, after which he immediately sat down. Following worsening relations with the Wesley, Pearl Nett published the Mitre in 1756, a vicious attack in verse on the Church of England and the notion that the Eucharist was a priestly rite only to be properly administered in the England by Anglican priests. So he's not attacking the Eucharist. He just says that Westlands don't have part in it. It's an Anglican thing. It's good history. Don't know where these, these hymns come from. They provoked a schism with the Wesleys and Perlnett. Perlnett's connection with organized Methodists came to an end. He preached in the countless of Huntington's Connexion until he opened hatred to the established church led him to become the minister of an independent congregation. All accounts show that Reverend Edward Perlnett, 1721-1792, to be a sharp tongue difficult personality who would rather pick a fight over theology than display brother love uh not a striker has read there in timothy has he the hymn that we're looking at is often called the national anthem of christendom oh i hate that word christendom january 2nd edward Parlnet christian historic institute the lyrics written by Edward, while he served as a missionary in India, first appeared in November 1779 issue of Gospel Magazine, which was edited by the author of Rock of Ages, Augustus Topley. This hymn was heavily altered by the Unitarian hymnal. So we're going to look at a hymn that has been heavily altered by the Unitarian which was also licensed to the hymnal of the Unity Church. All hail the power of truth to save from error binding thrall. What a name. So, let's begin. We'll read through here, we'll have some more notes. All hail the power of Jesus. There we go, already starting good. A hymn that has Jesus in it. And you know from previous other ones that we've done that, you know, this is number 17. 17 hymns so far, many of them did not have Jesus in it. Happy. Let the angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Crown him. Crown him, Lord of all. So... What we see here is Jesus, the name. Prostrate is to lie down, face down. That's not even on your knees. You're down. Lord, I am just this dirt that I'm in. The royal diadem, Isaiah 62 3. Thou shalt also be crowned of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Isaiah 28 5 in the day shall the Lord of hosts be a before a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people 
<laughs> gonna be not much people after the tribulation period but when jesus comes on that horse king of kings and lord of lords and crowns many crowns this hymn is on the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can say king, we can say crown. Crown him, ye mortars of your God, who from his altar call, extol the stem of Jesus, I'm mean, excuse me, of Jesse's rod. Now we see in Acts 10, 36, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. 1 Samuel 12, 7. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he had did to you and to your fathers. The martyrs, martyrs receive crowns, Revelation 2. Surely. Martyrs serve Jesus, who is God. This is not a Jehovah Witness in. Revelation 20, verse 4. I saw thrones, and they that sat on them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had they received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It goes from Jesse to David to Jesus. This is a hymn of the church. This is a hymn of the Jews. This is a hymn of the church age Christians. This is a hymn of the tribulation period for Jews. This is a hymn of the second coming of Jesus Christ with the Christians behind him and the Jewish people in front of him. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race. Ooh, you won't find a Catholic scene thing in that. Oh, I already can see why the Unitarians got rid of and changed and, and, and erased and added to this hymn. Because it worships God, Jesus Christ. He ransomed from the fall. We're all from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace. Uh oh, not a works. At least any man boasts. Well, there's a gospel in this hymn. The Jewish people can be saved. Who can save the Jewish people? Jesus, the Messiah. Sinners. That's me. Whose love cannot forget the wormwood and the gall. Go spread your trophies at his feet. I can assume that's where the crowns talk about in Revelation chapter 4. I'm going to say, I don't, I only see the elders casting their crowns. I'm not going to. I don't know about his Christians. But oh, the placement of heaven. Oh, Revelation chapter 4 here. Revelation chapter 20. Before God's throne. Glory to God. Let every kindred. We sang about Israel. Verse 3. Verse 5. Let every kindred, every tribe. That goes to Israel. On this terrestrial ball earth to him all majesty ascribe what is this him it's about the Jewish king the king of the Jews the title that was over his head the title that he will be on David's throne forever once he returns and sets up in Israel the kingdom Uh, Sansa 6, which is not by Edward uh, Perlnett. This is by uh, John Rupin. All that with yonder sacred throng gatherings, we at his feet may fall, will join the everlasting song, everlasting praise. Holy, holy, holy. Revelation 4.8. We will join those cherubim and worshiping and praising and giving power and glory. All hail the power of Jesus' name. The sinners, again, that's me. Trophies, crowns, and rewards because of Jesus. 
Every kindred, preach the gospel to every creature on earth, witness, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Keep on doing it until we get to New Jerusalem, until the day that we are absent from this body and present with the Lord, till that day that we are meeting the clouds together as all those that are saved. Oh, I can see why a Unitarian would mess with this. Because it's about Jesus. It's about his saving grace. It's about his lordship. It's about his kingship. Oh, and the kingship is a reference to the children of Israel. And not the church. What is he to the church? Grace. Our savior. Our lord. Our God. Praises and honor. And glory. Revelation 4.11 all for Jesus. This is a wonderful, mighty, excellent hymn. Now, we've gone through these hymns. We studied these hymns, number uh, let's see, 17. You say, well, what's your thing about you know this hymn for singing in the church? I think this one could be sung as a testimony in the church we're just lost in and worldly Christian, but I wouldn't have them sing it. I have them listen. For the worldly Christian, for the for the unsaved man, all oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Worldly Christians got power in, in ball games and in television and other things in fishing. Well, let them hear the power of Jesus' name. The angels will fall. Before Jesus Christ. That sinner will fall before Jesus Christ. It doesn't say. How should I say? It's not saying. This hymn is not written as I am singing it. First person. It is saying and written as in general what will happen. And it proves to be a prophecy. And the fact is, crown him, ye martyrs of, of your God, who from his altar call, ye chosen seed of Israel's race, sinners whose love cannot forget, let every kindred. This is one of those hymns that's not, I love Jesus. I want to do my best for Jesus. It's written in the general form that anybody can sing this hymn. If you love the Lord and you're saved and doing what God, it's a glory to God, great. It's all about Jesus. If you're a worldly Christian, you're singing this hymn, it reminds you to get your eyes off the world and get it on Jesus. The power is in Jesus. If a lost man hears this hymn and he sings it, the words can speak out. There's only one name. And it's not on the back of a, a, a football jersey or a basketball jersey. It's not a name that's going to be in the credits of a movie. It's not going to be the top ten of any names of the world. It's the power of Jesus' name that can save your soul. And it's for all kids. It's a hymn that ministers. It's a hymn that has the gospel. It's a hymn to say, get back to Jesus and do more. This one. Definitely. Now, I mean, like I said, you and Terry's mess with it. I can see why. It's a wonderful break. Jehovah Witnesses can't sing this song. Catholics can't sing this. Their power is not in Jesus. The name of Jesus is not popular among the Catholics. It's the name of Mary. All hail Mary, they say. When they do their beads. I knew I grew up. Unitarian is not Jesus. Evolution is not Jesus. All oh, hail the power of Jesus. Name. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. No other name but the name of Jesus. 